Fighting Sail, Fleet Actions from 1775 to 1815. We are just outside the port of Toulon. It is at some point in the Napoleonic era, and this is actually a bit of a small-scale skirmish scenario that we whipped off the top of our head. These are real ships that we will be using on the left, dressed in black and red, are the British the HMS Ajax, you can tell that's the Ajax, he's got the darker portholes, and the HMS Kent. These are both 74-gun, uh, third-rate ships, rather, with a crew complement of about 700. They are all that is left of a, uh, what would you call it, a blockading force. And over here, on the right, you've got the French ship, the Imperial, a first-rate vessel that has been chomping at the bit, dying to come to grips, and now they have had enough. They're going to set sail and see if they can run the blockade, get out into the Mediterranean proper, and start tearing the place up. One thing I found, I, I would like to do more historical scenarios, smaller battles, smaller ship actions, you know, two to three ships on a side, maybe some bigger ship, third rates. I found that when you're looking at naval actions in the Napoleonic era, all anybody wants to talk about are... Trafalgar, Battle of the Nile, Camperdowns maybe. Finding detailed information on the kind of ship actions that you would see in, you know, your Jack Aubrey series, your Master and Commander, or your Horatio Hornblower, it's hard to find that stuff. If you guys have any links to any sources where I could come up with some nice smaller scenarios, you know, we don't need 50 ships on the table, who's got time for that these days? But something a little more historical. Hey, what if? It's a little easier to find things for the War of 1812 because Americans just won't shut up about it. But I got to give them credit. You can find information on all of the little skirmishes. However, I do say little because the Americans were limited to, they had like one or two fourth rate ships. And then everybody else was, was kind of tiny. You know, there's a lot of smaller frigate actions, fifth and sixth raiders uh, barreling around. But, you know... It's the age of sail, baby. You got to get sail in there. And that's what we're doing today. So a little bit of explanation for our kind of hypothetical alt-earth scenario. A what if? What if a French first rate had to fight its way through two British third rates? What we're going to do is we're going to start them both within two inches of their respective table edge, edges. We're going to give our wind rows a slight tweak. The wind is going to be blowing... No, not, that's not right. It's going to be blowing this way, right? Because the captain of the Imperial is not stupid. He's not going to try to break out of the harbor by sailing uh, directly into the wind. That's not going to happen. So he's waited for favorable winds. They've shifted a little bit. You know, hopefully he's got it at his back. They've shifted a little bit as the battle starts. As a result, we're going to wind up starting our British vessels kind of more down here so that it, rather than trying to sail you know, in irons, dead into the wind. They're coming at it from a little bit of an angle. Close hauled, perhaps, but at least they have the option of catching this guy. And because I'm dealing with a table, a that is, my British ocean red, cloth French is three feet blue. across, we're going to start them right on the edge. We are going to have a French... That's what it's going to look like, but before we get to that, let's go Win the initiative on the first turn. We will be doing weather effects, but that's really about it. One last thing I should point out, victory conditions. If the Imperial escapes off the western edge of the board completely undamaged, without an anchor token, that is a major French victory. If it escapes, but she has an anchor token or a damage token, that is going to be a minor French victory. If she is sunk, that will be a minor British victory. If she is captured, that will be the major British victory. So the British are really hoping to bring the Imperial into the king's service. And the way they're going to have to do that is by softening her up get a damage token on her, get her boarding cut in half, and then come up alongside. So you're aware, these two ships have identical profiles. They are sailors. They will roll four sailing dice and re-roll ones. They have a discipline of... Oh, the flagship, by the way, is the Ajax. That's this guy here in front. With a discipline of eight. And the, eight, the Kent has a discipline of six. And then they have boarding and hull of seven and they roll eight dice on the gunnery. The beast, the 120-gun monster here with a complement of 1,100 souls, has four sailing dice. They don't have that much of an edge in sailing, except for that re-rolling the ones. A discipline of seven, bit of a wash there, but a boarding and a hull stat of 10, 
and then a gunnery of nine. So she can throw out some serious iron. Not only that, she gets to go first. She gets to roll four sailing dice. And we'll grab those out real quick and roll them right now before we shift the camera. And because she is sailing, uh, what did we say? She is uh, running, she gets a total of three sailing points on a 656. Six. Any four or better would give her a point. So she'll get to move six inches. There she is off in the distance, a total of eight inches off of the eastern edge of the table. Turning our attention to the British ships over here, they both have a sailing of four, and we'll roll for the Ajax in front. Remember, that is our flagship. They are only going to be moving on fives, but look at that. He's going to get three sailing points, and the Kent in the back is going to get two sailing points. So that's not too bad. For those of you that have never seen how movement works in this game, this is our movement template. And each of these sides is two inches. So since we moved him first, we'll go ahead and move him first and we'll measure front to front. Remember he had three sailing points. That's one, two, and then this is also the turn gauge. Well, he's a little bit a little bit in the way. So if you put him here, he can turn up to 30 degrees, and that's what this is for here. Whoop, 30 degrees, but we're going to turn him um, a little bit more that way to catch his prey, which means our buddy here is going to use one turn point like that. He's going to turn a little bit and then move two inches with his second, and that's going to be it for the British. Moving on to turn number two. The French with a three get the initiative again, and they're going to move first. Right now, the Imperial is running, so she... Hmm. The Imperial is running, that's what this gauge is meant for. The wind rose shows the direction that the wind is blowing at her, and if we keep this aligned just right, you'll see that the wind is hitting her center mast, in this quadrant right here. If we look at the mirror image, it's in this running quadrant, which means we will roll a sailing point on a four or better. She gets a grand total of two sailing points. She's only going to be able to move four inches. Now, the difficulty she has is that she cannot sail off the board to the north. If she does, then she will uh, run afoul of other ships patrolling to the north. So she has... Right now, I've got her set on a very specific line that has her exiting just inside the boundary, and that buys space in this direction. Man, you guys that are like geometry bros, you should be playing Napoleonic Sailing because there are all kinds... I mean, there's like billiard table style angles to have to worry about here. Let's slide over to the British ships. And here's what things look like for our blockading squadron. You can see that they have a very similar problem, that, that the timing is going to be critical on this. When do they actually turn to the north and shift from being close-hauled to reaching? To buy themselves enough time. And uh, I don't know, so let's just roll the dice. Sailing points for the Ajax first. You know, we should really start with Mm, we should probably not have done that. He's only going to move two inches this turn. But I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just leave him on the heading back to back like that. And then for the Kent, we're going to roll three. And he gets to move a grand total of four inches. You do not have to use all of your movement points. But, of course, we pretty much will. After moving, that's when you do your turn. And I'm going to go ahead and start the Kent's turn a little bit early here. Now, we may actually be up. Oh, we're outside of the fire arcs. That's this line right here. If I put this template in front of the Ajax, you can see, for her part, Lorient does not have a shot either, but they're more, greater than 18 inches away, which is extreme range for these guys, so we're just about done. We're going to roll for initiative. We get a tie roll. Now, interesting things happen when you are tied. Specifically, interesting weather things happen. We're going to roll a d6, and on a 4, uh, the wind changes... And I, on a one, it just goes completely dead. Everybody is anchored. 
Everybody earns an anchor, but for a six, it's a gale, and on a three, four, or on, I'm sorry, on a four, five, the wind changes one point counterclockwise. So instead of being at this angle, we turn it, and that's probably better for the British. No, now the wind is blowing directly across their starboard bows. And, you know, they, they were probably hoping for the wind to shift to point bay, but you, you get the idea. If the wind had shifted from this direction around, then it could cause problems for the Imperial. As it is, blowing directly from east to west isn't that big a change just yet, but we still need to figure out who's going first. On a red, this time it will be the British. And, man, if anything, I think that's worse. This wind is worse for the British. Because now they're going to have a devil of a time getting any closer to the French ship. We're going to move the Kent first, see where she winds up. Dropping our movement template right next to her right there. The wind is going to, still going to be coming in there, still close hauled. She is going to get two points. We're going to go ahead and put her... I think we have enough angle that we can bring her... Oh, man, I think that's all we want to do. I think we're just going to bring them straight across for now. Uh, and then the Ajax is going to be in a similar situation. If you don't roll a single sailing point, and remember, he gets to re-roll that one. So, hey, look at that. He actually gets to move two. There's two inches and four inches. And since they have that separation now, a little bit of separation, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing him around to bring her guns to bear. We know where the French ship is going, right? Friendship gets to go, and with a rather terrible roll, gets just a single sailing point. As I was saying, if you don't get any sailing points and you are reaching or running, I think maybe even close hauled, I'll have to double check that, you can still move two inches and you don't get an anchor token. However, if you are sailing directly into the wind, if you are in irons and you don't roll a single six for your sailing point, then not only do you not move, but you get grab an anchor token, and you won't be moving on the next turn either. That's the end of the turn. The question now becomes, does anybody have any ranging shots they want to take? Does anybody have the prey in sight? And I think if we check our line of sight from eyeball range, she does have a shot. Now, it's going to be at extreme range. This is 12 inches to here, and then another 6, so she is out of range. But now everybody has a better idea. And one of the things I like about this game, particularly when you start off separated with so much distance, you can justify pre-measuring. They fired at extreme range. They're just finding out how far they can shoot. So the fact that on our next turn, speaking of, where the British have the initiative... Now I don't think the British want to move a whole lot. So on this turn, yeah, it's okay that we know how far away they are. And uh, the two British ships are now going to have to roll. Again, if we drop this down here, the wind is coming in still close hauled, so he's going to move two inches dead ahead, and he's going to move two inches dead ahead, and that's going to be it for the British vessels. They're just creeping along. Remember, they have to move that minimum two inches. The question for the Orient now is, with her sailing points, and this time she gets a much better roll, the 5, 6, and 4 will allow her to rip on up a grand total of 6 inches. And the question is, does she want to present her broadside now? She's got the wind at her back. She'll have a much easier time swinging back around and cutting up behind these ships. I think maybe she wants to do that. Start taking pot shots at these guys. Uh, except she's outside of their fire arc right now. The other option is to try to get ahead of them, fire a couple of broadsides to slow them down so that you can escape. Those are her two options. For this turn, nobody has any shots. So the next thing we do is we move to initiative. And on a 5-1, the British do get to go first. We'll roll for the lead ship first. And on a result of, he, he gets a single six. Still cruising right along. And then the Ajax herself is going to get a grand total of two. 
So I'm thinking maybe peel the Ajax off a little bit. Bring her up to, use one sailing point like so, and now let's go ahead and embrace the chaos by bringing her up a second. And she is now going to spend at least one turn in irons. She better roll a six. Oh, you know, she has one more die she gets to roll, and that you only get to re-roll once. So that is where things end up. For the British, for the Imperial, she is going to get a total of three sailing points. And we might as well go ahead. She's in fine fettle. We're going to move six inches. My line is a little off here. She's going to wind up exiting here. She is going to have to make a turn to the port if she wants to escape from this battle. However, as things stand, it looks like we do have some Rudy Judy fresh and fruity. The Ajax does not have a good line, nor does the Kent, but boy howdy does she. And if she is located in this arc, tracing this turn line, this turn gauge line, if we drop that down here, if she's in this arc of his, then she would be raking and would get a chance to do a lot more damage. But she's not. So it's going to be the full 10 cannon broadside for the grand old dame... L'Imperial. Because they are between 6 and 12 inches separated, we are going to roll, and we are going to score a single hit on every 4+, plus, and if we get a 6, there's a chance for another hit. We get a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hits on the initial roll, and because we rolled a 6, we can roll one more dice, and on a 4 we would get score an extra hit. So we only got a total of six altogether. Now the Ajax has a hull of seven, so we're gonna roll seven dice, and for every four up, we'll take one of those six hits off. With a total of two hits negated, that still leaves four, check our, um, check our damage chart, that is heavy damage. Ship gets two damage tokens and an anchor, and that's going to be a real problem for them. That is the end of the turn. We roll for initiative. And the British get it. So the British will start off this turn by moving the Kent to intercept. And the Kent gets a total of... Now bear in mind, because the Kent is now has, has made this turn, she is... We can check with our gauge. The wind is still, until she, because the wind is due that way, until she turns just a little bit to the port as we're looking at her, she's still going to be close hauled. Fortunately for her, she does roll two sailing points, so she'll be able to make that turn right now. We'll, and I'm going to put the gauge on the right side. She's going to come up, and she's going to make the turn. She's just a little bit reaching, and then we might as well go ahead up two more inches to give us as much, you know, and we're going to turn her just a, just a little bit more, up to 30 degrees. This way, I think we're really going to be able to catch Lorient in our sights. And even if we can damage her and secure that partial victory. Now, for the Ajax, because he has the two damage tokens, he all he can do for this movement phase is try to repair. He's going to have to make a discipline check. He's got a discipline of eight. And if he scores a single six, he can remove one of these damage tokens. He did not. So he's not going to be able to move. Oh. No, you know, I, I got that a little bit wrong. You do still drift along. He needs a five, so he'll move two inches. You only move on the sixes. Oh, but he can reroll the one. All right, so he only moves... Two inches, and then he can turn. Remember that he's at half boarding and half gunnery. So instead of rolling his eight guns, he's only going to roll four. But, oh, you know, so that being the case, I think we just come straight across. Because we definitely, in fact, we might turn a little bit this way. Because we have a chance to keep her in the firing arc. Well, depending on where she moves now. Oh, that's why, that's why we're going to leave her straight. Because if she moves, we will at least get the four dice counter battery. And speaking of, let's find out what the Imperial does. 
With a single five, she is only going to get to move two inches. She really needed to do something a little bit more than that, didn't she? But the good news is, uh, we she can start making her turn. Now she's turning. Let's see, the wind is off that quarter, so she can actually move instead of moving thirty degrees. She does have the option of turning up to 90 degrees. So we're going to bring her around. We want to try and keep this ship... Oh, boy. Um, she's not going to be... She definitely doesn't want to be caught raking. So, oh, you know what? She, she's in trouble because she is. She needs to bring that forward to there. She brings her prow around this far, then he doesn't get the benefit of the raking shot. On the raking shot, you keep rolling sixes over and over and over. Now, unfortunately for her, she does forego the ability to take another broadside at the Ajax, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Because, as you can see, in fairly short order, she's going to be able to fire two broadsides, and he's going to struggle. He's not going to have a lot of room to make that turn to pursue. Regardless, that is the end of the running phase. Now it's time for the shooting phase. And the HMS, we're going to start with the HMS Kent. They are going to roll eight dice firing at, we're beyond six inches. There's our six inch range right there. So he's going to be hitting on fours with a potential extra damage on sixes. One, two, three, four, five hits. On a ship that's got a hull of 10, five hits, no exploding dice. And we get one, two, three, four, five, six saves on the four up for no damage. Now, we do still have four cannons, right? It's halved, firing at her. And uh, I think if we check our... Yeah, unfortunately for L'Imperial, he is going to roll his four dice, and he does have a raking shot. He's firing right across her bow, which means any sixes get re-rolled. He only winds up with two hits, but hey, you never know. If that gives them an anchor, that'll buy them some good time. Uh, unfortunately, she negates both of those hits, and that is the end of the turn. Rolling for initiative on the next turn... The Imperial gets the advantage. She is going to move first, and she is still, as you can see, with the wind directly from east to west, going to be scoring movement points on a four up. She only gets one of them, though. And the nice thing is our little measurement gauge here can also be used to measure two inches. And then she's going to be forced to turn a little bit so she can bring this damaged boy into her firing arc. She can turn up to 30 degrees, and I think that's just going to do it. We'll start with the Ajax. He does get to roll four dice for sailing. He's going to score just one sailing point. He's he's already got the, the anchor token. He is in... We might as well move him, like so. We're going to bring him up, and we're going to turn him. Start making that turn now. Then he can make his discipline check. With a high discipline of eight, he can remove one of those damage tokens. And he still doesn't get a six. So that vaunted British discipline is just not showing itself here. To everyone's surprise, the French are the ones that are showing the marksmanship and discipline. We do have one more ship to take a shot with, and because the wind is coming off of his... Because he is sailing in this direction... We have a couple of options. We're turning into the wind, so we're limited to 30 degrees. He is now reaching, so he moves on four ups, but he only gets one? Man, I am so sorry. Uh, so the question is, do we want to? He's got to move two inches because he doesn't want that anchor. The difficulty he faces is if he turns 90 degrees with the wind pushing him around, he does not have a shot on the Imperial. But he is still reaching, so hopefully on the next turn, he may be able to come around and cross her tee and do some big blamage. But we're done with the movement for both sides. The British ship, we measure to the center mast, does have a shot here. Although, I'm sorry, the Imperial gets to fire first. 
and she's going to fire a broadside. Now, her, her starboard broadside does not have any ships in its arc. You can fire from both sides of the ship. She doesn't have a target there, but she does have the opportunity to hammer the Ajax again. And this time around, she's not... Oh, you know, to make matters worse, they are within six inches of each other. That might be bad for her. Uh, but being within six inches means you hit on three or better. A total of five hits. These, oh, and not only that, but the fives and sixes get re-rolled for additional damage. So five plus an additional four means nine hits on a ship that's only got a hull of seven. Nine hits. Looking for fours. Nine, eight, seven, six, five hits. And the Ajax is sunk with all hands. Because that five is an automatic sinking. Catastrophic damage. Hit the powder magazine. Doesn't even get to make a return shot. Because this is not simultaneous firing in this game. The Kent could fire. Now, normally in Fighting Sail, if you're doing fleet actions, which I recommend... If we had a couple of people in a couple of hours, I'd be doing a 300-point battle instead of this little 125-point battle. Normally, when a ship is sunk, you would reduce the morale clock. Well, I should... Let me take that back. When a ship suffers damage, your morale clock drops. When a ship is sunk, it drops even further. And when your flagship is sunk, everybody else raises the... Uh, what do they call it? Lowers the colors. Because we're doing just a simple little skirmish, I'm not using that system today... I'm just rolling to see if this poor little third rate can stand up to the big mamma jamma. And with a roll of six for the initiative, the big mamma jamma is going to get to go first. Tactically, this means, ooh, and she gets to move a total of six inches. We're going to bring her six inches up. And we got to turn her just a little bit. We're going to try to keep her reaching. Staying off that 45, uh, unless, you know, I think we can bring her around to heat. We're going to have to separate her just a little bit. She's going to make two turns and come back just a little bit more, but that opens up her firing arc, hoping to maintain a shot as the Kent goes and manages to score not a single sailing point. So the Kent is going to take his free two inches of movement. But he, for whatever reason, he was not able to catch any wind. And because he did move two inches, he does not get a sailing token. So here we go, trading broadsides. The French have the initiative. They're going to roll ten dice at close range. Was it close range? Let's go ahead and... Check that. We are mass to mast just beyond six inches. We are at medium range. We are only hitting on fours and only re-rolling sixes. We got a grand total of one, two, three, four, five on the initial roll. That was a six. And then this has an opportunity to do one more if we get a four up. And we do. So one, two, three, four, five, six hits on the ship who has got a hull of seven. We'll add one more die. Looking for four ups. Seven minus two is another massive broadside. Five hits is catastrophic damage. And now the British ship goes glug, glug, glug down to Davy Jones' locker and unopposed our French first-rate ship of the line is able to escape into the open sea to play merry havoc with merry old England's Merry old Imperial shipping lines. That's the end of the battle, just that quick. Even battle points-wise, the in French ship had the harder task because they had to sail through the gauntlet, but having the wind, you can see now what an enormous advantage that is. You really get to dictate the terms of the battle, regardless of how the initiative rolls come up. Of course... Getting good initiative rolls so that you can bang away at your enemies, do some damage, and cut down on the amount of dice rolls they can make when they shoot at you. 
That ain't nothing to sneeze at either. But boy, given a choice between the initiative and the wind, take the wind. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm praying for you.